I want to just say a little bit more about the joy. And again, you know, I am in no way a political leader or anything like that. But something that I think is still relevant in Landauer is obviously much of like political organizing and working those institutions. It's a lot of drudgery work. It's a lot of unglamorous stuff. Mm -hmm. But also there should be joy there. Like, it should be something you want to be a part of. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, what's interesting is, like, you know, what we could take from what he is saying there, especially because he thinks, you know, joy is an expansion of our power and all of that. Yes, there are battles to be fought. And there is, you know, real number crunching to be done, hard work to be done. But, you know, also a part of a sustainable organization, it should be, there should be something joyous about it. Not like, you know, it's always a pizza party. I'm not saying anything as, you know, naive as that but you know to really feel i want to be a part of this that you that's know, what this i'm is saying i feel experience. like it should feel good solidarity should feel good yeah I mean, make yeah. it seem like it's torturous it for people yeah. well, make it seem like, like it's a duty right and maybe partly it is but <laughs> yeah but yeah. it's like you don't get it we, we construct it so that you know the concept of allyship makes it seem like you don't get anything out of it it's just like you do this and it's your moral mm. duty it's like very deontological and then like it does it if you fail it like you f at doing it the right way by some other one else's standards, it just like feels like really bad. You're like, I might, I might be a bad person. Um, and people don't like being co called bad people. So like when there's nothing in it for them, not just in terms of their interests, which I usually talk about, but like emotionally, like people need to feel like they're again, connecting with others, um, that there's, that they're breaking boundaries, that the things that they thought were obstacles between them and other people, that they'll be accepted by others, you know, if they're trying in good faith. And I think that there's just something about our political culture currently that like just doesn't really see this as being necessary. And mm -hmm. I don't know why anybody, Michael Brooks used to call it just as a totally unattractive culture. Like why yeah. anyone who wasn't right. already yeah. involved, like anyone who isn't already invested in it would mm -hmm. get invested in mm -hmm. it basically right. like if you're yeah. a middle if you're a middle class person at a university like you're already invested in people seeing you as moral in a particular way so you're going to be responsive to like the signals people send are sending you but people who are outside of that environment or whatever environment like whatever environment is you're talking about they're looking at it and they're like but like why would i do why would, why would i do this yeah. why would yeah, i sign I think up that's for pain right. why would i sign up for and this humiliation this like and, yeah so this is something that I think Landauer like did point like he pointed he had the number in like 1895 in that little text Anarchism and Socialism he's like you know what I'm more worried about than like you know you talk about like okay what if we established communism and then it was you know people work you know by their own volition and he's like everyone is always like well what about the people who don't want to work mm -hmm. And he's like, actually, that's not a problem. They'll be taken care of. You know what's going to be a real fucking problem? Are the moralists who are like going to put the hard that's workers right, on, a, right. on a fucking yeah. pedestal right. and shame everyone else and establish a new culture of like moralistic spectacle and, and, and guilt. He's like, that's the real thing to worry about when it comes to God. Yeah, I almost so felt like he was about to be like, if there that. is a place for violence, it's like for them to be dealt with. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're my Get exception. the moralists out of here. Yeah, exactly. No, this can and should feel good. Yeah. And like the the sort of moralistic, I mean, this is where his like Nietzscheanism really shines through, right? Where he's like, like that's just like a sad, that's just a sad spectacle of just like slow blinking, dead inside Kantians accusing each other of not being sufficiently pure or whatever. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. who wants a part of that? Get me out of here. I'm just imagining a university space of a bunch of Kantians just all dead inside, just like. <laughs> Yeah, did you follow the categorical imperative? I can show yeah. you didn't. Just like, my God. Well, if you didn't feel pain while you were doing it, it wasn't real. Yeah, yeah it was uh, inclination, no, I, yeah. Uh, I yeah. love his emphasis on joy and of like yeah. the need for this to be like ground floor. That like it can't be something that you like promise yourself later. Like, oh, we'll do the hard work now so that we can have a good... He's like, no, this is supposed to be yeah. about like joyful, loving community from the start. Like, I, I right think the only thing that keeps the left alive in that sense then is that like, well, the alternatives are also incredibly joyless, right? Like, yes, like, <laughs> we, you know what I mean? Like, we, 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 be, we might be fucking up a lot and like really not making this a very attractive scene, but it's not over yet, right? Because what's the fucking alternative? Like, Barstool Sports and the Country Club and shit, like, well, I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we got a chance still. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> There's still an opening. We can yeah. still be fun. We can still do it. I mean, I'd take over the country club if, like, I could. And, <laughs> r- like, just, like, run a sweet one for regular people. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you'd infuse it with joy. You know, yeah. uh, and I, I, I do, I do love ending on this note of you. Know, you know what? Actually, joy isn't something contingent. It isn't like the icing on the cake. It actually is, right. you know, a really fundamental passion, and so much the worse for a culture that turns joy into a negative, into a social defect, into a character flaw, into a thing that one ought to do without. I I don't understand what type of world that's trying to build, but I also don't understand what networks that's trying to expand if you're trying to bring more people in. You know, we already live, many of us, much more than even all four of us, live joyless lives. Who would ever want to say, hey, guess what? The worst is yet to come. <laughs> oh, my God. And you have to do more work in, like, yeah, with yeah. others right. and be miserable in more areas in your life. So, like, not yeah. only in, out, in your job and, like, in your, like, isolation in your, in your home. Yeah. You, yeah. Also, you like, also need to join an activist organization in which you're scolded yeah. and also Scold. feel... Scolded. <laughs> <laughs> in which you show up and just get eviscerated and silenced every time you show up. Yo, you leave work, your manager's on your ass. Well, I'm glad I'm getting off of work so <laughs> some to, college student at the can throw factory. Robin D'Angelo at my face. Yeah. I mean, if we don't if we don't show them the joy, then they're gonna get sucked in by that sweet, like hedonistic pleasure, right? Which is what which is what the what capitalism runs on, which tries to convince you. It's like a kind of ersatz joy tries to convince you that the joy is there but of course you're going to end up just as sad as the rest of us yes i, I don't mean to get so ascetic there i'm usually pretty heated like you know yeah <laughs> oh yeah no we're all hedonists here yeah. but i know that asceticism yeah. is the way <laughs> <laughs> even though it's not even though i can't do it i know it's the way I I got a hard disagree. Hard disagree. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. Oh can I God. read it? Can I read a quote from like the very end of the revolution piece that I think speaks to these 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 ideas? Yeah. Do it. He says the joy of revolution is not only a reaction against former oppression. It lies in the euphoria that comes with a rich, intense, eventful life. What is essential for this joy is that humans no longer feel lonely, that they experience unity, connectedness, and collective strength. Hey there, thanks so much for listening. This is just a small sample of the full episode. To listen to it and to access other premium content we're putting out, please subscribe to us on Patreon at patreon.com slash philosophy. See you next time.